Hey guys, this is Ranjit from Simulation Tech, and in this session, uh, we're gonna discuss regarding how to perform a drop test analysis on Ansys Workbench. Okay, so the most of the peoples are very curious regarding uh, what will happen to my component when I drop from a certain height. It may be a mobile phone or anything. Okay, so this kind of analysis we can easily uh, simulate in Ansys Workbench. Uh, when we talk about Ansys Workbench, uh, we have uh, two different systems. Uh, to carry out this analysis the one is explicit dynamics uh, we are all know that uh, explicit dynamics is one of the most powerful analysis in answers it takes a lot of uh, time to work on but it gives you a more accurate results and also you can perform the drop test analysis on a transient structural analysis also uh, basically uh, what is the key difference between the two methods is like explicit dynamics and then uh, transient structural is uh, only the solvers Okay, so when we talk about the explicit dynamic, uh, it uses a solver called uh, explicit solver. But when we come to the transient structural or it may be a steady state uh, static structural, uh, it uses a solver called implicit solver. Okay, so the explicit solvers are uh, uh, very well, uh, it's made up for the nonlinear problems. Okay, so but when we come to the uh, implicit solver, uh, it face some issues while solving the non-linearities. Uh, that is the only issues. It takes a little bit of, uh, I mean, more time to process the solve. I mean, procedures. So that is the key difference. Okay. Uh, in today's problem, uh, we're gonna solve the drop test analysis. I mean, we're gonna do the drop test analysis on uh, transient structural. Uh, basically, I have a, a plastic a component. Uh, it's like a bracket. Uh, what I have here, I have a steel bar at a certain height. Uh, when I apply the gravity, due to the gravity, so if the ball is moves from a certain height, it hit it on the component. Uh, due to the hitting of the ball, I mean it's made up of steel and it is made up of ABS. So right now I am assuming that it's ABS. Uh, when it hits the component, how much deformation and how much stress uh, is happened to this component? So that's what. I'm interested to, to I mean uh, evaluate the results okay uh, let's carry out the analysis it's pretty simple uh, we plan to make a videos on explicit dynamics also in future so soon you will expect that videos also so for now I'll just drag and drop the transient structure so and you guys are well aware of the theoretical part regarding the transient structure and if you don't know regarding that uh, I'll give the link in the description or in the i button also just click on that and take a look on the theoretical things because always the answers is all about theoretical stuffs okay uh, here it involves the two materials one is structural steel and another one is uh, abs so i'm gonna add the both materials so since it's a non-linear analysis right uh, i'm gonna add a non-linear materials go with the uh, general non-linear materials uh, first i'll add the non-linear structural steel then I need the plastics so that I can go the first one and looking for ABS plastic okay so here we have the plastic ABS high impact so I'll add this component okay so once you're done with this part just close the engineering data now uh, we're done with the engineering data part next we need to uh, import our geometry since uh, we don't need, uh, we don't need to create the geometry so i already have the cat file so all we need to do is i just import the parts fine so just go to the files option so likewise uh, just change the units to meters i mean uh, millimeters file import external geometry okay downloads so i'll choose the assembly file and click on ok and say generate okay so now the files are generated so here we have like uh, too much distance between the components so this is my actual component it's like a plastic component so basically the bottom sides will be a fixed one so the sides are fixed this regions and uh, the ball is free to fall from this height okay 
so this is my boundary condition make sure you'll have a two different parts okay so i'll have a ball and then component that's good so i don't need to i don't want to perform any geometrical modifications for this component since if you want to remove this names and everything you can because uh, it always creates a poor quality of mesh nearby that region uh, but in my case i don't need to do any geometrical modification i'll just close it go with the model okay so once the component is imported uh, just click on the ball and try to assign the materials that is structural nonlinear and uh, for the bracket so i'm gonna assume the it's plastic abs that's fine and in my cases uh, i'm gonna assume this ball as a, a rigid body that means uh, i don't want to observe any deformations on the ball while hitting on this component so that's why uh, i'll change the stiffness behavior to rigid one so usually if you take a look on that uh, stiffness behavior it always set to flexible but i don't want the flexible behavior just click on the ball so only on the ball uh, so i'll make it as a rigid one so if you made it as a rigid one even if you try to mesh that component uh, in that rigid body uh, there won't be any meshes created okay it will be simply says that it's like a uh, it uh, if you make the component as a rigid one it doesn't make any sense even if you choose a structural steel or anything only the thing is uh, the properties is changes that's it so other than that uh, there won't be any uh, deformations is observed on the steel due to the heating okay once we're done with this thing uh, uh, then we can do the meshing just right click and say generate mesh okay so like i said before uh, we don't need notice any mesh on the ball but we have the mesh on the component since the mesh is very poor uh, i'm going to reduce the element sizing furtherly i'll use uh, maybe 10 mm okay even 10 mm is also bigger uh, maybe i'll go with 4 mm let's try with this mesh what does not works will furtherly reduce the mesh sizing okay uh, i'm going to reduce furtherly i'll go with the 1 mm okay i thought 1 is too fine might be go with 2 right click and say generate mesh that's fine so anyways uh, this mesh is uh, pretty much good if you want to evaluate the quality because uh, the quality is very very important so since it's used as a convergent based solver uh, if you have a very poor quality of mesh obviously you'll get an error message at the end of the analysis okay the problem won't be get initiated the next thing is uh, go with the analysis settings i'm going to assume that this analysis can happen for a 3 seconds uh, it's up to you uh, you can give any time steps if you want so i am says that this analysis should be ended on a 3 seconds then once you're done with this part uh, we need to define the uh, time steps so it is also uh, one of the factor um, which determines your analysis solving time also okay so if you go for a very uh, i mean minimum uh, time step so the solving time is very very higher but probably for this analysis uh, i need the results for every 0.5 seconds that means uh, 0.5 what will be the deformation and stresses and once again 1.5 to 2.5 and uh, the guys who don't know about uh, transient structural we already uploaded a, a video on transient structural uh, just take a look on that video so in that video i'll explain clearly regarding this what is the step number one and then current step means and uh, step ending time auto time stepping means everything okay uh, i'll attach the link to the description so just take a look on it but for now i'll just uh, turn off the auto time stepping and i'll give the time step as 0.2 okay might be 0.5 it will increase our analysis time uh, i mean uh, reduces our analysis time mm, uh, if i give 0.5 that means for every 0.5 i'll get the results 0.5 1 1.5 1 2 and 2.53 okay that's what it means and uh, the next most important thing is uh, you need to define the fixed support okay fit to the screen i'll make a zoom right leg fixed support uh, you can give anywhere uh, even if you want to give the fixed support at this corner you can but i'm gonna give the fixed support over here and click on apply that's why uh, 
uh other than that uh, what are the loads so simply uh, i don't need to apply any velocities to the ball so where is our ball so here we have our ball uh instead of applying the velocity i'm going to drop the ball freely okay uh, for that i need the gravity effect so i need to include the gravity effect uh, just click on the transient insert uh, you'll have the op uh, option called standard at gravity just click on it okay so initially if you included i mean uh, when you included the standard at gravity uh, the direction is set to z direction that means this ball can move in the z direction but i don't want to move the ball in the z direction so i want to move the ball in the negative y direction so i'll simply change the direction to negative y direction now everything is assumed correctly so we just fix this component at the bottom and uh, we applied a standard at gravity for the whole system okay uh yep so we're done with this part uh i'm interested to view the total deformation and uh, equivalence justice and click on solve it will take a while so we have to wait for the completion of the solution okay so in my cases uh, it's solved within 10 minutes uh, it definitely changes with respect to the step ending time uh, you given over here so if you go for a very low time steps obviously the solving time will be much more higher and also you'll get a more accurate results when you go for a, a very very minimum time steps also okay so when we looking for the uh, total deformation uh, yeah i definitely noticed some of of uh, deformations over here but it's not uh, look so clear so maybe i'll animate i mean i'll scale the results a little bit okay so even i'll have a only a blue color okay so what i'll do here is i'll just specifically select this whole body to do that uh, right click insert uh, total deformation but not for the all bodies i'm gonna pick the bracket only and if you want to rename it you can but i don't want see now you can observe that uh, how the deformation has happened due to the uh, i mean hitting of the ball so you can animate it but uh, this time steps is not enough to create the animation that is the only thing so all you need to do here is you need to reduce the uh, time steps and try to solve the whole problem once again and uh, since in our cases the deformation is very very minimum uh, i'll just scale to the results so that's why it seems that uh, it has a higher deformation but uh, for this cases, it shows a very, very minimum deformation. Like uh, you can notice that it literally doesn't deform uh, anywhere. So it's e power minus five values. Okay. And when we talk about the stress values, uh, okay, uh, I'll include uh, stress for this component separately. Uh, I'll pick this whole body and click on apply and say solve now you will get the stress values it's very very minimum so you know that like how to view the yield stress point and then comparing the stress values whether this component is fails or not so this values uh the yield stress point of the operator so if you want to view it just go to the material properties and click on it which answers will shows the material properties over here and uh, when i go to the bottom so i'll have the uh tensile yield stress uh, i mean strength of around uh, 27.44 mpa uh, it's pretty good safe uh, we are in the 0 0.0032 value so if it is exits that value like 27 uh, might be filled get 35 or 60 so that may be a worst case as the component will definitely fails so otherwise right now the component is 100 percent safe okay and uh, still uh, if you don't want a uh, to apply the standard at gravity instead of a free drop uh, you want purposely uh, add some sort of velocities to the ball that is also possible uh, for that uh, all you need to do here is just right click on the transient insert uh, you may have the option called acceleration or uh, velocities so you can pick anything uh, then in that uh, geometry selection mode you have to pick the whole body that is the ball and apply the uh, desired velocity and choose the direction as a negative y yeah you can get the results so it's pretty common simple uh, i mean uh, common step so uh, 
basically why we choose the transient structure and analysis is because this analysis is not happen uh, less than one second uh, it happens more than uh, one second like we assume this analysis to be happen for a three seconds right so so that's why i'm choosing a transient structural even if you want a more accurate results uh, then go for a, a explicit dynamic analysis uh, in future uh, we plan to make a, a dedicated theoretical sessions on uh, explicit dynamics and a practical session so how to perform explicit dynamics on ansys also okay so stay tuned so that is all for this session and uh, we'll meet on another interesting topic thank you